Good afternoon and welcome to the Marjon Live online talk for primary education BA honours. Uh, my name's Kari, I am one of the student recruitment team here at Marjon. Uh, it's my job today to look after our Q&A box, um, so please if you do have any questions at all uh, as we go through the talk, please drop them in there. Um, no question is silly um, and if you're not keen on it being shared publicly, that's absolutely fine. We'll keep it hidden so it's just us that can see it um, and we'll ask it in a different way. All right. Um, joining me today, uh, we've got one of our current students, Kelly. Um, Kelly is in her final year of her two year masters um, and has been at Marjon for five years. So while she doesn't study primary education, uh, she does have a wealth of knowledge around Marjon and all the support systems at Marjon. So if you have any of those questions, please drop them into her. And I know Miles, who is the programme lead for this, uh, will be uh, deferring to her to answer some questions as we go through. Um, I'll take this moment to introduce Miles. Miles will be talking you through the course. So if you do have any course specific questions, they'll come to him. Uh, Miles, I'll hand over to you now. Hi, th thank you very much, Kari. Um, thank you for the uh, lovely introduction and uh, just to just to welcome everybody um, to this uh, live talk event. Um, uh, it's um, it's a, it's a really great opportunity to speak to you, although I can't see anybody. So um, uh, I'm hoping that this is going to provide you with the kind of information that is relevant to your kind of decision making process and uh, that um, you know uh, I not only provide the information but also to some extent inspire you to uh, make a decision that you know uh, brings you brings you onto our program. The um, primary BA is is a primary education BA is a really fantastic program so there's a lot that I want to say about it but also just add in a quick caveat which is that I think it's really important to get the program that's right for you so um, you know don't don't feel shy about asking questions there are no silly questions, as Kari said, so, you know, feel free to put something into the chat and really, you know, we want to support you making the right decision. If that's the decision to come to Marjon and study with us, but not on this program and something else, then terrific. If it's if it doesn't feel like Marjon is the right um, sort of fit for you at the end of the day, then you've got to make that decision as well. You know, um, I um, would just like I'm going to uh, defer to Kelly really, really quickly in a minute, because actually what I'd like Kelly, I know, has been at Marjon for five years. And that, that's that's fantastic. You know, she's got lots and lots of experience. She's actually been at Marjon longer, longer than I have. Um, and so I wonder if Kelly might be able in a minute just to say something about what makes Marjon unique as a as a place to learn, um, as a place to kind of, you know, really take yourself forward uh, from perhaps a school experience or if you come from employment into study uh, in, in that sense as well. And what what really brings um, make, makes Marjon such a unique learning environment? One of the things we talk about a lot is um, the the fact that Marjon is a small institution and this is absolutely kind of critical to what we what we try to do. We try to really get to know our students so well to offer them really unique and bespoke support. So, um, you know, whereas uh, some universities you might get onto a program and occasionally get to get some time with some of the staff at Marjon. We we know our students incredibly well. Our programs are smaller. Our class sizes are small. We have lots of um, uh, kind of individualized support, which really heightens the personalized learning experience. So um, I'm just going to defer over to Kelly um, and ask for Kelly's thoughts about what makes Marjon a great place to study. Uh, before we kind of get into the course specific talk. So Kelly, I um, hope you've had a few thought moments to think about that question. Yeah, so as um, Miles said, I've been at Marjon for five years. Um, during that time, I was on um, Sport and Exercise Science um, and now I've just finished my Sports Rehab Masters. Um, the reason why I chose Marjon, I came in um, straight from college, straight to Marjon. Um, it's quite daunting. Uh, I wasn't yet 18 when I was looking around the universities um, as I'm fairly young in my year. Um, when I came here to have a look round, um, when it, they say it's a small university, it is. You can walk from one end of campus to the other end in about five minutes. Um, you get to know so many people, you have that real community feel. So I could have friends from, I may be in a master's, but a lot of my friends are in first, second and third year um, from a range of different courses, you know. So just because I'm on a sports course, um, a few of my friends have been on teaching courses or psychotherapy and counselling, like a range of courses, just because you're on primary education doesn't mean you won't get to know a lot of people. Um, 
as I'm into sport. Um, the sports facilities here are, are great, um, which is uh, ideal for myself and my course. But if you're interested in um, extracurricular activities in sport, um, just because of your course, it, it, you still get to use them. Um, you know, you can have the community feel within your lectures. Um, my lectures start range from um, four people in a class up to 15, 20 um, in my undergrad. Um, so it's that real one on one support that you get from your lecturers, as well as student support, uh, futures, um, a range of different places around the university. So that's probably one of the reason of me choosing Marjon. Thank, thank you, Kelly. That's an amazing answer. You well, well practiced and rehearsed with that <laughs> one. Brilliant. Um, just, just to clarify, uh, you can only get from campus from one side of campus to the other side if you are a sports student. I've never managed to do that, Kelly. So uh, impressive, impressive timing. I'd, I'd say it's definitely more like ten minutes, but maybe that's for <laughs> just people who are kind of around my age. I think. Um, anyway, um, thanks very much. Great, um, great response. Um, Kelly has mentioned a few things there that you know, if you have a, if you have a question about something so she's mentioned futures for example if you've got a question about anything that you hear uh, during the talk and want some clarification then please post it in the chat and Kyrie's keeping an eye on that and will let me know later on what those questions are and we'll get back to you. Um, Kelly can we move on to that first slide please? Um, so I'll just uh, just kind of give you an overview of what this uh, session is going to look like so I'm going to talk through, talk you through uh, the kind of um, the primary ed primary education BA in kind of holistic broad terms to start off so to, to really kind of give you an overview of that and then I've tried to pick out what I what I would see to be the top three bits the bits that are really going to impress you and uh, and be kind of knock out, knock out for you um, I'd also like to give you an overview of overview of the modules um, that I, I, I'm going to try to minimise how much I say to some extent about these because I could go on for a very long time and talk about them in real depth. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to break that down and just demonstrate where the kind of the, what the thinking is in terms of the, uh, the threading through of some of the learning aspects within those modules as they kind of incrementally build on your knowledge year by year. So I'll, I'll do that. I'm going to pick out a, a first year module as an example as well to talk about. Uh, and I'm, I'd imagine that many of you considering uh, primary education uh, as a degree option will be thinking very in a very focused way about you know your your future vocation uh, and in all, all likelihood that's going to be in primary education itself um, although there may be some other other areas of the industry that you, you're keen to work in so I'll expand a little bit on uh, kind of future pathways towards the end before we get into a Q&A uh, my contact information is there so if at any point um, beyond uh, this talk today you'd like to get in touch with me then please feel free to drop me a line and I'll get back to you um, as soon as I can with with some more information okay so um, before before we get started then with the overview just a quick question that I would I would put to you is is this what is what is the fuss all about when it comes to primary education um, could you click on to the next one please Kelly what what why do a degree in primary education what's what's so important that important about that and um, I, I think it's really critical in terms of your decision making to really kind of weigh this up in your head okay and you, you know primary teachers uh, and I've been a primary teacher myself um, primary teachers are not the, the best paid people in the world. Uh, we tend not to go into the job because what we're after is, you know, uh, those um, luxurious holidays every summer for four weeks in the Caribbean uh, on a on a private yacht. We're, we're not those we not tend not to be those kind of people. So actually, I think there's an element of humility and humbleness in uh, taking a, a, an approach or thinking about your future. Um, and wanting to do something which is uh, a, a kind of public service um, and and you know really working sort of front line um, it, it's something that has incredible value uh, so essentially it's really not about the money uh, that we go into primary education although you know the sal sal starting salaries are not too bad and you can do quite well so don't let me put you off either it's a it's a profession uh, and uh, you can do you can do very well some uh, uh, some teachers progress very rapidly towards through the main uh, the main pay scale onto upper upper pay scale and ob obviously there's a leadership route as well through so you can do extremely well um, however why 
go into primary education, what's all the fuss about? You know, for me, um, there are a couple of things to be said there. The first is fundamentally about wanting to make a real impact and difference on the lives of young people. Um, and that is something that hopefully if you get a chance to be in a primary classroom one day, and some of you may have already had that experience, that that's something that really strikes you. It's something that really you, you, you kind of really instantly feel a sense of kind of internal gratification or satisfa satisfaction that you are impacting on the learning or the well-being or the socialization of a child or a group of children and you can see it on their faces and it really resonates and there's something so remarkable about that i don't know why i'm still doing the job that i'm doing now i feel like i should go back to the sometimes honestly i do feel like i should go back to the classroom and teach again because it's such a wonderful wonderful job to do um so i think one of the key things about going into primary education is about making a difference and also second to that maybe on in a kind of slightly different sense is the contribution that you can make to some children in particular there are so many children who are for whatever reasons either disadvantaged or have a particular need that really needs to be met and you could be that individual that makes a real huge difference in the life of that child and so i think there's there's something really important about being a champion for children as well and being the person who can take up a child's cause and fight their corner and really be supportive and it may be that um, you experience uh, as I have on many occasions children who are in some ways adversarial towards you and combative even but actually they know that you're there every day for them being that consistent and reliable person and it helps to shape them and their identity and their level of aspiration etc I think there is so much good that can be done within the context of primary education. I could just go on and on and on, which I which I, I did promise I won't. So I think it's a wonderful job um, to do. I think it's a wonderful um, area to study. And, um, you know, I think if you are not the kind of person who thinks I want to make that difference, then this this course wouldn't be for you. I think you have to be motivated by a desire to impact on children, impact on public service. That may be as a classroom practitioner, or as I say, it may be in some other dimension related to education. Um, there, there's obviously a beauty in studying education in its own right, and that may also interest you, but it tends not to be the case with so many of our students. Um, could we, I, I'm, so I'm gonna talk through the um, education programme um, here um, and <laughs> excuse me, uh, just kind of draw your attention to a few things about the nature of the programme and how that programme kind of sits within the university. So the first thing to say is um, that this programme, the Primary Education BA, is a Bachelor of Arts programme. It's not a Bachelor of Education and it's not a postgraduate certificate in education, so it's not associated with QTS. OK, so QTS is Qualified Teacher Status. If you are keen to become a qualified teacher this is a route to doing that however it doesn't at the end of this degree give you QTS what we find with many of our students in fact the majority perhaps 75 percent go on to take a PGCE for one year following the three-year program with us so our program is a non-professional degree saying that there are some elements of professional professionalism with it and I'll allude to some of those later when we look at, for example, project and placement experience through the three years of study with us. But it's, not, it's a non-professional degree uh, sitting alongside a number of other non-professional degrees within the Institute of Education. So Marjon, um, if you like, imagine Marjon is the kind of like the, the umbrella organisation and within Marjon there are several schools. So we have the Institute of Education, which is us. We have the uh, uh, School of Sport, Health and Wellbeing, which is where Kelly's programmes have sat. We have the Teacher Education Partnership, which is where our professional qualifications leading to uh, teacher status are. And we also have the School of Arts and Humanities. This programme sits in the Institute of, Institute of Education alongside programmes such as the um, outdoor, uh, outdoor Adventure Education, Education Studies, Education and Psychology, uh, Childhood Practice, um, special educational needs and development, uh, sorry, uh, special educational needs and disability studies. So we sit alongside a range of educational programmes that are non-professional credit bearing, okay? Um, and that's quite an important distinction to make. 
in no way does that invalidate this program against other professional programs. It's just a different sort of program and one which will, I think, uh, and, and does equip you with an exceptional and detailed knowledge of what it of what primary education looks like in in a historical and ideological and philosophical sense, but also from the uh, perspective of understanding pedagogy and practice and the classroom experience and the learning environment. So we cover such a broad range that gives you that great wealth of knowledge and understanding and experience in terms of development of your skills before you embark, say, on uh, postgraduate study either down the PGCE route or down the school's direct route. Again, if you've got a, a question about these, then please feel free to uh, feel free to ask. And um, Kelly, I'm just going to come to you with a question in a moment. Maybe you can say something a little bit about this. Um, but I, 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 I want to emphasize as well that the identity of you as a student at Marjon is both as a student of the university, but also as a student of your school. And there's something very important about that. So Kelly, um, we'll talk perhaps a little bit about the uh, the network of sports students there. One of the things that we found with within our school is there are opportunities to share modules um, with other programmes. And what this enables us to do is to build up a really great network among our students. So although you'd be on a primary education degree with us, you would be spending time with students who are doing childhood practice, education and psychology, uh, students who are maybe doing outdoor adventure education as well. So there are all these opportunities to mix and mingle with the widest community within the Institute, Institute of Education. Um, Kelly, I wonder if you might say something there at that point, just about that experience of being part of the um, of a particular school. Yeah, so um, I'm part of the sports school um, and Throughout my BSc, um, I was able to work with uh, strength and conditioning um, students, um, as well as health students, as well as um, rehab students. Um, by doing that, it made me realise what I wanted to focus my BSc on and focus my master's on. Um, by doing that, it made me realise that I want to go into sports rehab, but take the health side of sports rehab. So I've been working with um, different patients with different health conditions. But without sharing those modules, um, getting to know the people on them, discussing different topics, um, I wouldn't have made that that decision to then progress on to a master's. Um, as my course is very quite generic in the sport, whole of sports science, um, it made me focus on different areas such as like nutrition. Uh, I've gained personal training um, qualifications. I've gained different qualifications by being on different modules um, as a school. Uh, so yeah, it made me realise the the ch opportunity out there within the different um, courses. Great, thank you, Kelly. I think that really kind of um, hopefully helps underline the, the the point I was trying to make, which is that we um, through associating with that wider range of people, we develop that sort of diverse experience and understanding, and um, it opens our mind to various choices that lie ahead of us. Um, you, uh, yeah. So thanks very much for that. Um, the, the the next point I want to make, and I, I I think I've sort of alluded to this already, is about those established pathways that we have at Marjon in terms of your progression towards teaching. This is uh, again absolutely fundamental to the BA program. Um, is that we have a clear sense of where students want to go and how we support them in getting there. The uh, the program, as as you'll see when I come onto the modules. Um, provides you with that kind of experiential learning that enables you to, to develop a lot of skills, practical sp skills and the um, competence of working with and supporting children in, in, in various contexts uh, and through various projects. The um, opportunities to progress to PGC and, and schools direct programmes and also apprenticeships run through Marjon into that give you that qualified teacher status are, are really established. We have very close working relationships with uh, with Kate Brimacom, who's the programme lead for uh, for these for these PG programmes as well. So it's uh, it's um, uh, a, a great place to be in in, in terms of um, knowing that there is uh, a, a good clear stepping stone and that that is um, so efficiently and smoothly run and we find many of our students not all but many of our students do progress to the postgraduate and schools direct programs with us um, again one of the things we've talked about um, is that kind of uh, unique environment for support 
um, and supervision that we have here at Marjon. So um, one of the things that I, I just wanted to mention to you was the PDT uh, support uh, that we offer for all students. So this sub personal development tutor provision that we have. Um, every student is assigned a PDT at the beginning of their university time with us, uh, which in most cases extends through those three years. Uh, this enables you to develop a, a, a good working relationship with somebody who has both your in, in interests at heart in terms of both your pastoral care and also your academic support. So they're able to really kind of be there for you um, in, in a, a, a diverse range of situations. There's much fantastic services at Marjon as well from our from our student support, our chaplaincy, our futures team, which offers support and advice around your careers. Um, so yeah, great, great range of um, support there at the university. Um, in, in relation to the teaching team, so um, I've already mentioned that I, I have primary school background experience. I also worked in uh, English language teaching for a long time, so I've got a sort of 50-50 split in my career before coming to Marjon and working here. Um, the team has a range of uh, people with a range of experiences and backgrounds. We've got some real strength in terms of uh, experience in the primary education sector, including within leadership roles. We have uh, members of the team who work in uh, the in early years, who've worked, have extensive experience of working in early years, and so are able to support in particular with things such as child development. Um, and we have uh, expertise within special educational needs, and we also have research expertise as well within the team. So we've got a really diverse range of people um, who all bring their different backgrounds and skills to uh, to to working working with you. Um, uh, great. OK, um, Kelly, I'm going to go to the go to the next slide. So this uh, uh, this is where I promised that I would say um, that the three knockout punches for me. OK, so I'm just going to G myself up a little bit for those. OK, right. OK, Kelly, go. Oh, you've done it. Right. OK, so the best bits. Um, OK, so primary education is so one of the things about this degree which really is distinctive and differs from um, a traditional teacher education degree um, and I, I, I think teacher education degrees are fantastic but one of the one of the differences for us is that we take a very kind of critical and exploratory view of what education looks like so whereas a traditional education um, degree that's le that leads to qualified teacher status requires you to go through certain um, sort of uh, meet certain standards at certain points in time um, and uh, undertake practice and that all of those uh, practice experiences are related to the qualified teacher standards. Um, our programme differs very substantially from that. So we're not about meeting those QTS standards on this programme. Instead, we're about trying to really understand what primary education is about. We're trying to get to grips with the psychology of children, the, the nature of the learning environment, the importance of social experience, the depth and the range of the curriculum and why it is the way it is and whether or not it should change. And what we try to do really on this programme is foster a lot of debate and critical inquiry and uh, kind of an inquisitive mindset in relation to primary education that enables you to get an in-depth understanding and a very personalized understanding as well a subject which is very subjective unique to you uh, of what education primary education looks like it's uh, so so for me this is a really distinctive point that actually we're offering uh, a degree which is challenges you to really think about the nature of how things uh, and way in which things are set up the way they are and whether or not and I, I'd be big believer in that there are whether or not there are there is scope for improvement and what those improvements should be and I think as a, as a teacher myself that's hugely motivating in terms of what you aspire to and I'll just give you a couple of couple of quick examples so um, I have some third years who've just undertaken their research with me. Uh, one of those has been looking at uh, the association between deprivation and uh, low pupil outcomes. And this has absolutely inspired her to consider um, how she's going to go forward to practice and 
what her emphasis is going to be on in terms of engaging with parents in order to um, sort of establish uh, a kind of a, a system between school and parents that enables the children to flourish better. It's so, it's so important for her that she's kind of reached that understanding in her in her own mind. Another of my students has uh, engaged in a, a complex study around the academy process uh, and the, the many schools have become academies, as you may be aware, in the last sort of 15, 15 years or so. And he's um, undertaken a lot of research talking to a variety of educational professionals, talking to head teachers, talking to people at the local council, talking to people working in academies to come to his kind of, uh, you know, very meaningful um, sort of consideration, which is that actually for him, academies don't work. For him, he would rather not work in an academy and it's helped to shape his identity and give him real perspective. And that's really important as you progress as a teacher in, in terms of defining what matters to you what kind of school you want to work in what kind of professional you want to be what your values are etc so you know I, I think one of the things that will come through on the degree is that you will look at education through fresh eyes and you'll and feel really invigorated about uh, the whole uh, the whole sort of um invigorated might be the wrong, wrong word you'll feel very uh, excited about what you can do as you work towards becoming a professional in the future as well um, so point two captures that quite nicely as well. Those those philosophical, ideological and cultural sort of forces and issues become paramount in our understanding. So it's not just about being in a classroom and teaching, but what is going on outside and beyond that that impacts on what's inside. The third kind of knockout punch, I think, for me is the diverse range of opportunities that we have to work alongside children in uh, in a variety of different contexts. And I'll, I'll come to these a little bit more when we look at the modules in a minute, but I think they are refreshing, exciting. We try to be innovative and therefore we are constantly looking for ways to improve these. Um, I will just give you one one quick example. As you're all aware, we've been through quite a tumultuous situation recently through the uh, through the lockdown. Um, and so this has meant inevitably that you know, the university has had to scale back on some of its plans with regards to placements and projects that's been across the university and across the sector nationally. What our um, staff have done on our programme is instead of delivering sessions that they had planned to deliver to children in some open open day workshops, which are really going to be really exciting, is build a resource bank which uh, it, and host that on a website, which is going to enable teachers to dip into all sorts of aspects related to uh, emotional well-being and mental health, which are the issues that we're going to be explored in those uh, in those sessions that they planned to teach. So what we're trying to do always is look for opportunities to uh, be be innovative and 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 begin to generate that impact which we hope you will have in the future as you as you progress into into teaching okay um right okay um i'm just wondering yes yeah, so at, at that point i'm going to I'm going to go into the modules next um and um yeah i feel like I've been talking a little bit, so I just want to throw a question back to um, to Kelly before I start on the modules. One of the one of the things that is really important on on our program and across the across the range of programs at Marjon is how your learning builds sequentially. OK, uh, it's, it's absolutely critical that you're able to make those um, those uh, or sort of make, uh, kind of forge links with your prior learning so that it you kind of build year on year and make use of your prior learning as you develop as well. So by the time you come to your third year, you're going back to those things from the first year. You're kind of getting a fresh view of those and you're seeing their importance and seeing their relevance, which sometimes only comes through really strongly much later on. Uh, this is very evident and again in the work of the third years when they reach that kind of point where they're working on honours projects and dissertations and, and research. Lots of pennies start to drop and they think, oh, I can see how this is all joined up it all starts to make sense and there's a, a real sense of kind of euphoria there so i'm um, i just wonder if kelly might like to say something about this experience of uh the the, the kind of the building on on learning as you progress through the program i'm also just going to take a breather yeah so um uh going back to my bsc so um in year one uh it's quite generic we looked at psychology physiology biomechanics so uh, that side as well as coaching um, as well. 
Um, then in year two, we had the chance uh, to progress uh, on with those so we could um, advance our knowledge on the physiology, psychology, biomechanics. Um, and then in our third year, it was more of a um, chance to pick and choose what you wanted to do. So I personally chose physiology and biomechanics as my starting point. And then that was um, backed up as well in my honours project. So throughout year two, uh, I realised I was leaning towards physiology and biomechanics, that side of, side of things. Uh, I wasn't really interested in the psychology. Um, and that was built on in the research methods uh, module um, when I started to look at my dissertation. Dissertation's a big project in your third year. Um, and that built on into my third year when I'd done my honours project um, and done my dissertation where I looked at um, if fatigue affects um, throwing technique. Um, so linking the physiology and the biomechanics in together and all coming together at the end, um, eventually uh, producing a piece of work, um, which I was quite proud of, um, and getting a good grade. So it all came together in the, the final projects. Great, thank you, Kay. Um, I, I, I think that really adds some clarity and um, it kind of underscores that message of how we, we kind of progress and that, that essence of progression is, is, is really central in terms of what we tried to provide and how we, how we planned and devised the, uh, the programmes here. Um, I'm just going to, so you'll see in front of you an overview of the modules and I'm just going to expand on that a little bit and give you an example uh, from within the primary education, um, <clears throat> excuse me, within the primary education degree. So if you look, for example, um, in you'll see that we've got year one, year two and year three modules where it uh, indicates an A that runs in semester A, B is semester B, X runs throughout the year into both in through both semesters. So um, you'll see there that in year one, uh, the sixth module down is creative and inclusive practice. So creative and inclusive practice uh, begins to um, develop awareness and understanding or build on prior awareness and understanding of issues around creativity in the classroom uh, it, from a pedagogic perspective, but also reflectively as well. So getting you to consider how ref how creative you might be, getting you to also reflect and consider the nature of inclusion. So your knowledge of inclusion, what that means to you personally. Uh, we then work uh, through this through the whole year, looking uh, shifting our focus from um, the personal reflection into something which is more about practice. So focusing on how you might practice in a creative and inclusive way. Into year two, we build on this in a number of in a number of areas. So you'll see there are two optional modules in year two: critical perspectives on numeracy and creativity in the outdoors. So both of these lend themselves really well as follow up to the uh, this first year module creative and inclusive practice. So both the, uh, both of those year two modules allow you to tease out further some of that knowledge that you will have acquired and developed in year one. The aspect of inclusion is built on really fundamentally within our learning and teaching module. Again, you see in year two, uh, this this module really focuses in on aspects of special needs, uh, uh, mental health and well-being and looking really broadly at the wider school curriculum as opposed to the national curriculum. Into year three, we then look at supporting children and young people. So this again is building on this notion of um, inclusive practice. How do we uh, liaise with um, uh, sort of organisations beyond the school and individuals or experts beyond the school who are going to be able to support support children? And uh, so, you know, and takes, it, takes account of things such as the uh, special educational needs code um, and, and, and those kind of wider um, sort of policy type issues. So we go from in year one reflecting on your own sort of perception of inclusion and understanding some aspects of practice into year two, some implementation of those through the teaching and learning, learning and teaching module and into year three, giving that a broader consideration in terms of what the policy implications are, are there, etc. So that learning really builds sequentially through the program and there are a number of threads running over and lots of crossover. So it's not it's not absolutely black and white. There are some that, you know, some reach into other modules as we as we progress through. Um, I'm just going to 
kind of run through these modules and then what I'd like to do is just pick pick one out which I'm going to expand on a little bit more detail. Introduction, introduction to education studies sets the tone for the course and is a really un, underpinning sort of module. Again, this is a shared module with students from a number of programmes, so you get that diverse network already from, from, the, from the word go. This uh, module introduces you to a range of very important sort of theorists uh, uh, connected with education. Um, and and issues ranging from uh, complexity around the curriculum, uh, the learning environment, uh, socialization ed in education, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So introduces you to some big meaty concepts and those I think only really kind of uh, whilst we introduce you, those come to light a lot more and you'll see those threaded through the other the other modules as you progress. So for example, what, what we might look at uh, Brun, the work of Bruna in in this uh, module and that's then followed up followed up in the uh, critical perspectives on numeracy module in year two uh, which I know well as I teach that one um, so we uh, child development begins to introduce you to um, and, and when I say begins to introduce you to please don't don't, don't take that as a kind of like a, a patronizing statement many of you will be coming uh, with experience and knowledge already of many of these many of these areas what we what we look to do is enhance that at the appropriate level so when you come into us we're working at level level four straight away um, uh, building to level six by the end of your degree so we are really trying to build on prior knowledge so if you come in with some uh, some knowledge of child psychology that's absolutely ter absolutely terrific and would enable you to um, perhaps step further and faster than maybe some of your peers and more broadly reach out into some of those areas of child psychology that we might not anticipate from some of our first years. So we really do hope that you can bring your knowledge with you and we, we look to make the most of that. So child development really looks at the importance of, uh, you know, the development of child psychology, the importance of language, the importance of play, these, these sorts of things. Um, children's literature and drama I'm going to come to in a minute. So just watch this space. Very exciting. This one. Uh, engaging with engaging with practice. This is our first um, uh, kind of tailor-made experiential learning module. Now it's a first year module and so what we intend, what we do with this one is we organise a number of projects that take you into different settings. So you get to choose from a variety of projects. These are supported by our staff. Um, so there's a there's a specific tutor for each one. So there may be um, up to five or six projects this year. We had a STEM project running in primary school, a special educational uh, needs project at a special school. We had a music project at a local primary school we had a dance project at a local primary school so we have a range of projects that enable you to get in work really closely with children in a really supportive way um, so yeah just kind of in introducing you to practice and getting you that experience and also getting you to really think about how you become a reflective practitioner and uh, kind of you know challenge some of your own thinking challenge some challenge some of the orthodoxies that are out there and and really reflect deeply on the nature of what you're doing um, learning at Marjon is a kind of a, a bit of a nuts and bolts uh, type module. It's really important. It threads through the entire year and it supports all of your uh, all of your academic learning. So it's it's absolutely crucial for us. It's it's it might sound a little bit dry. We look at things like referencing and study skills and note taking and writing essays, but we set that and pitch that all within the context of education. So um, there are some overarching big educational questions that we ask within this module, which kind of brings it to life and it gets you to really chew the fat and talk about your your own sort of opinions and then try to also at the same time. And this is this has been done really, really successfully in re recent years, really underpin your academic skills. So when you uh, continue through year two and year three, you've got that solid foundation that you need so that some of those things that you need to be able to do uh, in in an academic context become just kind of second nature and uh, just just habitual for you. Um, creative and inclusive practice. I, I, I've mentioned this one already. Um, global childhoods in so into year two we have global childhoods um, uh, in and pedagogical paradigms at the beginning of year two. So global childhoods really takes account of wider and more diverse kind of considerations around the nature of childhood, um, introducing you to international perspectives on childhood, whether those be from um, affluent, more prosperous, wealthy uh, northern neighbours in Europe, uh, where educational system seems to, seems to exceed and thrive, or whether it's uh, countries in sub-Saharan Africa, where may, may, there may be, you know, considerable challenges uh, in terms of the provision of of education. So we try to take a really global look um, at some of the implicate uh, some of the issues around 
um, education, whether that's access access to education, whether it's to do with uh, mental health and physical health, whether it's to do with diet, water, you know, a whole whole host of issues that uh, that feed into our understanding. And this is this is really important from a humanistic sense to be able to see beyond our own shores, to be able to see how and where the uh, education system in our own country is located and how it kind of relates to other systems. And that, that you know, whilst um, it, it, you may think, but I don't want to go and teach in, in Japan. I don't want to go and teach in, in, Zab in Zimbabwe. Absolutely, no, you know, no, nobody's expecting you to do that. However, having that understanding of international league tables and the forces and pressures and how curriculum developments overseas may start, start to influence how, how, the, how they have, for example, with mathematics recently and our, our mastery curriculum. The, these things are really powerful. We live in a global world. And so to get to groups with education in our own country, we have to understand the global context. Slow down, Miles. Sorry. All right. OK. Um, pedagogical paradigms in uh, semester A uh, introduces you to various um, uh, or expands upon uh, knowledge around uh, t teaching uh, methodology, whether you're kind of looking at transmissive approaches or whether, whether we're looking at um, approaches such as um, kind of directed learning or or mastery approach, as I, as I just said, or whether we're looking at humanistic approaches um, or we're looking at kind of, uh, uh, let me think, so kind of uh, very sort of free school settings um, as well. Um, so it, it introduces you to a range of different perspectives on the nature of teaching and how can how, how can people teach and that that comes through those different settings really really effectively two two options um, in year two so critical perspectives on numeracy and creativity in the outdoors um, maths it's like marmite either you love it or you hate it uh, for students who say they hate it I really encourage them to do this module because it is a really fresh take on mathematics and opens people's eyes um, uh, it's uh, we, we, we look at the uh, at various ways in which mathematics can be brought to life for children and how how important mathematics is and how it really empowers children in their learning. Um, so uh, yeah, really thinking about creativity there, for example, uh, creative approaches to learning. Um, creativity in the outdoors, um, again, really hands on practical module and something to say about both of these optional modules actually is there are practical elements. So with the create numeracy uh, module, for example, what we do um, in in terms of our assessments is we we ask you to create a teaching resource that, which is used in schools. In recent years, that's taken the, the form of a, a teaching game. So we spend some time in schools observing teachers, talking to children, getting to find out what mathematics is like in a school setting. OK, really having that kind of, you know, um, it, it sort of intimate experience and knowledge of that and then you go away you spend some time talking collaborating co together and uh, and working with me and we come up with some great ideas for for games uh, that you know um, you're able to go back to the school and play with with the children and see how they're kind of responding and learning in the in, in that situation so it's a it's a really fun and engaging uh, module to take part in um, I've got to say some good words about the outdoors one as well I guess uh, which is a great which is a great module again very ha very hands-on again into schools, looking at school, looking at children um, in their in their outdoor learning areas, um, but also you, you, so mod, the 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 tutor on this module will take you out to the coast, um, will take you into different settings, will make use of the campus grounds as well to kind of really expand on notions around creativity in the outdoors. Um, you'll see in year two as well, we've got an experiential placement. We have one of those in year three as well, just to cover both those together quickly. Those two placements, we hope by this point in time, you're establishing, you're beginning to establish a network. We, uh, with the support of our futures team and with our very extensive network of um, professionals across the uh, across the city and in across Devon, uh, what we aim to do is get you all into uh, educational contexts to take part in uh, an experience, a lot of experiential learning. This again is underpinned by reflective practice um, and gets you to really sort of like make sense of different settings, uh, assume roles of responsibilities, um, uh, learn about elements of practice um, 
and and you know these can go in many different directions so for example you you may go into a setting and find that you're working in a year three classroom and you're there every week and you're working with the same group of children delivering uh de delivering english this is a fantastic opportunity for you to develop your knowledge of curriculum develop develop your knowledge of small group work develop your knowledge of uh, uh communication with language and behavior systems and rewards and it goes on and on and on and on uh you may find yourself in a totally different system you might uh, or context for example you might find that that you are delivering a club regularly over 10 weeks um, at a school and it's an after school Lego club with foundation stage children and suddenly you're, that's a totally different ball game. You're then looking at the nature of play, you're looking at the importance of language, you're looking at the importance of socialisation in that in that kind of context. So the uh, experiential placements should enable and do enable you to kind of get out and really kind of strike out develop your network, develop your passions uh, and, and, and kind of also acquire that understanding of what area of education you may want to go into in the future as well. Um, you'll see in year two we have a research methods module. This is an integral um, uh, part of your learning here. So this is about getting to grips with uh, various re uh, methodological designs, research processes as well, and the various kind of philosophical underpinnings of many of those as well. The reason for this in year two um, is that by the end of year two, you submit a research proposal. Uh, your research proposal becomes in year three under the support of a supervisor um, a research project that you'll see that's there as our honours project it's a big module it lasts all year you have individualized support for that through those throughout that year um, in terms of uh, planning your research process um, looking at your data, analysing your data, submitting drafts of, of written work, getting that feedback, you know, so there's, a, there's an ongoing dialogue through the year between you and your supervisor and um, something we do on our, our programme as well, uh, which, which is something we have only just introduced this year and continue to, will continue to do uh, for the coming years uh, because it's worked so fantastically well, is run um, workshops through our, through our third year as well to offer additional support. So as well as meeting up with your supervisor, you're able to get together as large groups um, and uh, sort of meet with um, a range of people who are going to give you really uh, terrific support and advice about the uh, various stages of those projects. OK, developing a philosophy of oh, learning and teaching kind of it's like that advert about Ron Seal does what it says on the tin, really. So really kind of gets you thinking about what is learning, what is teaching? How do these two things relate to one another? Uh, and the focus that we take there is the wider school curriculum. Uh, uh, just a note on that. So we have national curriculum, which is the mandatory statutory curriculum, and we've got the wider school curriculum. The wider school curriculum is the curriculum that exists outside the national curriculum that schools prioritise. So, for example, if you've got a school that prioritises outdoor learning as part of their provision, that's within the school curriculum, as opposed to maybe the national curriculum where it's not a mandated subject. Developing a personal philosophy of education in year three enables you to really reflect, think about and take your time to work out what it is that you want to do, what kind of professional person you're going to be and offers you that critical sort of support at a point in time when you may be putting in your application for PGC or Schools Direct. So it really kind of enables that to happen there. Um, that enables you to really identify for yourself who you are as who you are who you're going to be as that professional into year three you'll also see supporting children and young people i've talked about this one already and quality and leadership in education so this deals with uh some of the aspects around performativity uh the um offset agenda league tables school governance that those sorts of issues so again really fundamental in terms of giving you something um critical to think about as you're going to as, as you're going towards uh, a, a teaching career. Um, great. I said, uh, can we just get quickly on to the next one, Kelly? I said that I saved the, it's not saving the best till last because I think they're all great, but I did just want to kind of pull one of these modules out really quickly um, and say something about it. This is our children's literature and drama module, which I think um, kind of perhaps typifies the student experience um, on this program. And uh, I know students love, love this module. Um, over the last couple of years, what we've tried to do is, is get students into schools, into the school uh, where we go and do our final presentations early so that they can get time talking to children about books, reading with children, engaging them and, you know, learning, learning as much as possible about reading and early, early literacy in schools. This is uh, this is a great way to 
for, for students to kind of unpack some of the learning on the on the program on the module as they uh, work together in groups to um, create a an adapted form of a children's book. So take I think one of the ones that was selected this year was um, um, the uh, Room on the Broom, uh, the uh, which you, you you may know well uh, down said the witch and down you, you know may know that one and uh, so again what students do is they take this book and they write write an adapted version of this and then as a team of students they go into the school and they present this adapted version to two children thereby considering the nature of language the nature of the learning environment how we um, how we make use of uh, drama, drama techniques to support and engage learning uh, and, and there's loads of that. I, I, I'm involved in the dr drama bit as you might imagine. I get a bit of a buzz out of that. Um, so it's uh, yeah, really fun, great, great module. And again, what's important about this is it introduces you to theoretical aspects of learning literacy of literacy and what and language development. Um, and also it gives you that practical experience within a school setting um, so that you are able to build and develop and enhance those that understanding in, in that practical context. OK, um, just quickly then into because I, I know that I'm a bit short on time, there may be some questions um, into the uh, into the future pathways. Um, I've mentioned some of these before postgraduate certificate in education um, and the uh, schools direct. Uh, the uh, the difference between these is essentially um, that the schools direct experience is uh, perhaps more intensive from the outset in terms of what you're expected to do um, in a, in the classroom. So you are your your a lot a lot of your uh, learning is provided by the uh, within the context that you're studying in. So by the school uh, or by the perhaps by the teaching alliance if it's part of a multi academy trust or something like that as well. Um, postgraduate certificate is taught uh, on campus. They're more, may perhaps more taught components, um, but more on these, more on these in due course. These programs are all available at Marjon, plus our apprenticeships and other things that are starting to emerge as alternatives into teacher education as well. Um, if you're, uh, if you're, if you've got the bit between your teeth, like Kelly seems to have for um, academic study, and you want to keep pursuing that then uh, we have master, master's programs which may well support so MA in education um, and also an MA in uh, children's and young adults, adults literature which are both fantastic and uh, very exciting. Not wanting to teach, that's fine. You know the, the thing with this program is like I said from the outset this equips you with uh, kind of critical thinking skills. It's not um, a degree which kind of in, in any way straitjackets you, it, it enables you to really get to grips with some big, wide ranging and complex issues that are potentially, you know, global in reach, uh, big philosophical ideas that, um, you know, un underpin knowledge and learning in so many different areas and potentially so many different sectors of or industries that you might seek employment in the future as well. So I think the, the nature of this programme is such that, you know, if you don't want to go into classroom and don't want to teach and you're also not wanting to go on to um, academic, further academic study, there is the, you, you are really well set and really well placed in terms of the, de the development of your skills, knowledge and understanding. Um, I think that kind of brings my talk to an end, but um, uh, if anybody has any questions, Kari may have some uh, lined up and I'll do my best to answer those. Kari? Brilliant, thank you Miles. Uh, yeah, one question is uh, what are the assessment types on the course? Are there many exams at all? OK, um, thanks Kari. The, um, so the university is really not very keen uh, on exams. OK, um, that's the first thing to point out. And um, on this programme, we don't have any exams at all. So we, we're, we're all big believers in coursework. We all believe that you can get the best out of students if actually they're given appropriate time and space to, uh, to complete assignments as opposed to working in uh, working to deadlines. There are deadlines anyway, right? So if you do coursework, you know that you've got to meet the deadline by a certain point in time. Just as I have within my job, I have to meet deadlines at certain points in time. It tends not to be sit down and I have two hours in which to write <laughs> 3,000 words though. Uh, and so that, that I think gives uh, a, a false indication of um, and, and, and slightly invalid um, uh, result 
in terms of somebody's learning and their understanding. So in terms of the assessment, the approach to assessment, what we try to do is something that's quite diverse. So um, I've mentioned some already. So for example, if you go into a school and you present an adapted version of uh, a children's book, that is one of our assessments, that's a presentation. If you create a digital online learning resource that might support teachers, that is, a, is, is, a, is an assessment type. If you uh, work to create a teaching resource that you can play in uh, a numeracy session in a classroom, that is one of our assessment types. Sitting alongside some of these practical types are, are some more formal types as well because this is an academic degree. So uh, there are structured, structured assignments, um, essays, uh, there will be portfolios. Um, um, there are within the experiential modules and engaging practice, there tend to be reflective journals as well. Uh, there are also presentations. Uh, presentations are done typically via PowerPoint, normally to an audience of just one, but sometimes more. And so the, the, the range of the range of um, assessment modes is designed to really equip students with um, a, a range, again, a range, a range of skills. Some of those are collaborative and so require you to work in a team to undertake a particular type of project. Some of those are independent, some of those are digital, some are so mo most involved digital elements. You know, let's not go away from the fact we tend to use computers for everything. So there tend to be digital elements. Um, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so hopefully a real range uh, which, um, you know, is also quite inclusive, we feel. Brilliant. Thanks, Miles. Um, someone has just asked a question about entry requirements, but I know we are really short on time, so I've just popped the answer in the box. Um, so if anyone else is really interested, have a quick look there. Um, one thing uh, that would be useful to know is what are kind of the typical contact hours each week, Miles? Yeah, thanks. Um, so, Kari, the contact um, hours for our degree typically uh, for somebody coming into the first year look like about 10 hours a week in terms of contact time. Um, so this would be uh, so you'll see if we if, um, can we go quickly up to the mod module overview, please, um, Kelly. So if you look at the modules, you'll see that there are um, two um x modules in year one two x modules so they they go for the whole year and there are two modules in a and there are two modules in b so either in a or in b you'll have four modules so you'd have the two a ones and the two x ones two two b ones and the two x ones so um it, typically uh, we're looking at two to three hours for each module some modules tend to be be shorter in terms of the time that we allocate. So, for example, our learning at margin module, we typically allocate two, one and a half to two hours per week for that one. Whereas for um, children's literature and drama, for example, gets three hours. So these these range as well. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just, to, just to add to that really quickly, yeah. so that that's that, that's balanced out. So you might think, wow, just nine, ten hours, and I can get a degree. Wow, that's great. <laughs> But it's it's not quite it's not quite that straightforward. Uh, we we do have an expectation of uh, a sort of ratio of one to three slash four in terms of the hours that you might put in. So one taught hour should be mirrored or matched by about three to four hours of independent study outside, uh, which tends for most students to kind of like peak around assessment times. So I don't know why that is. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I was just going to ask Kelly about that. Kelly, um, could you just share with us kind of your experience in terms of the independent study that you've had to do? How easy was that to kind of get into and what support was there to get used to that? Yeah, so um, I had a little bit more contact time just due to mine being a bit more practical based, um, but I having to use the theory as well. Um, however, the, the practical, uh, the independent study time, um, it's it's there for you, so you get you use it however you want to. Um, what I would do is, um, if I didn't have lectures in a day, go to the library. There's um, different floors on the library. Um, if you have a chance to go on the virtual um, campus tour and have a look um, and see what it's like, but um, yeah, so you go to the library. Um, there's study spaces all around campus, um, and for group work, singular work, but also there's um, support as well if you're struggling with. Um, go to student support. So personally, I'm dyslexic, um, but I didn't know that until I went to university, uh, got in contact with student support, um, and there was a support there for me to be able to set out plans to be able to do this independent study, because um, a lot of my college uh, um, work was 
contact time so didn't know how to fit it, that in so got the student support to help me as well as my personal development tutor to just help me work out what uh, I need to do uh, prioritize things um, but that doesn't stop you from doing other things um, you can go off and do your sport can go off and socialize whatever takes your fancy um, there is fitting times around that brilliant thank can you just Miles. Not really really quickly I'm just going to add in there that um, yeah that Kelly's point's really, really great. And a couple of things she mentioned there around sort of wider student services are really crucial here. So whilst you might have sort of nine to 10 hours um, taught time on the programme, we would absolutely encourage you to make use of the wider student services that are, that are available to you. So for instance, I know, the, you know, we've got a great digital team um, that, uh, you know, can equip you with all sorts of skills over, above and beyond what we do on the programme. We've got the futures team that, you know, if you engage with these guys, it's you get amazing support. If you engage with our um, AIM sessions, which is our wider st study school sessions, again, amazing support. There's so much that you can do and take advantage of at university. So, you know, if you're, if you're paying the fees, absolutely make, make best use of those, uh, those resources. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Kelly, can I ask you to move on to the final slide for me, please? Um, so we are now uh, out of time, unfortunately. Um, so we want to say thank you very much uh, for listening, coming to the talk. Uh, what I have done is I've popped Miles's email address in the chat box. Um, so if any of you still have any burning questions afterwards that we haven't been able to answer during this, please drop Miles an email. Um, as Miles has alluded to, um, there are loads of other talks happening um, and our, Kelly's just put up uh, the slide which lists any out. Um, especially kind of she kind of mentioned a bit of the support that she got through um, through kind of student support. There's a whole range of different talks on there. Please go have a look. And if you think you're in a similar situation to Kelly, you're not really sure, not really sure you think you may have dyslexia or you know you have dyslexia or any other any other um, thing that actually we may need a little bit of extra support on things, please get in touch early um, and they can talk to you about how they can help. Um, so the final thing for us to say is thank you very much uh, and hopefully we will see you all on campus at some point soon. Thank you.